This is a video on how to do a Charles Law problem. And the equation you see in front of you is a little different than the one that we took in your notes, but um, trust me, it is the same thing. I just wrote this here to kind of help you understand um, what Charles Law is. And um, what Charles Law basically says that if you have a given volume of a gas, it's going to be our V1 volume, okay, at a given temperature, T1, if I increase the temperature to like say T2 to something different and I increase it or decrease or anything like that, the volume of that gas is going to increase or decrease at the same amount that the temperature increased or decreased. It's called a, a direct proportion. So um, this equation that you see right here is a little different than what we took in, in notes, um, but to get the one that we took in notes, you're simply going to cross multiply and this is what you get. You get V1 T2 is equal to um, V2 T1. Okay? All right, and it's pretty much the same. This is a problem you might see on the homework tonight. And um, really what we've got to do first is identify our T1, V1, T2, V2, our temperatures and our volume. So let's start off doing that first. Um, the 200 milliliters, that's going to be our initial volume. That's our V1. The 20K is going to be our T1. That's our starting temperature. It's not an I, it's T1. And notice it's already in Kelvin, so we're all set. Make sure your temperature is in Kelvin first. And then our V2, um, we don't know. It says, what is the new volume? That indicates, new volume indicates V2, so we don't know that. And then the second temperature is that 40K, so that's T2. At this point, you're just going to plug in numbers. Let's write our equation down. Um, we've got V1, T2 is equal to... V2, T1, all right, and then um, all we do is plug numbers in. So we're going to go 200 milliliters, make sure you're including units, guys, parentheses, T2, it's 40K, all right, equals V2, which is, uh, we don't know, so let's just call it V2, all right, and then the other temperature, T1, was 20K. All right, at this point, guys, it's simple algebra. You have to isolate V2 because that's what we're looking for. We're looking for the new volume, so simply divide this side by 20K to get rid of it. In algebra, whatever we do to one side, we have to do to the other. So we simply divide, and then V2 all right, is all that's left on this side because those two cancel out, and our answer is 400. All right, but the unit here, we've got to do a little math, not really much. Um, but notice the K's cancel, okay? And all you're left with is milliliters, which makes sense because we were looking for a volume. Um, make sure you circle your final answer, um, and you're done. Uh, another problem you might encounter is a problem that's actually in degrees Celsius instead of degrees Kelvin. And in this case, you just have to make sure to convert Celsius to Kelvin before um, you do any of the math, okay? So go through, identify everything first, and then we'll do our conversions, okay? Our V1 um, is going to be 500 milliliters. That's usually the first number that you see in most cases. Um, and then it says it cools, all right? Now, in this case, um, it cools. So our... Um, our volume is actually going to shrink because when things get colder, they get smaller. When they get hotter, they're going to get bigger. So that's one check you can always do on your problem. If the problem talks about cooling, you can assume that your V1 um, is going to be bigger than your V2 because it's going to shrink. All right? So next, our, um, our T1 is going to be 80 degrees C. Okay? Our V2 is unknown. So I'll put question mark, and our T2 is um, 50 degrees C. Okay, now remember when we're converting to Kelvin, all we have to do when going from Celsius to Kelvin is add 273. So we're going to add 273 to that, and that ends up giving us uh, 320, no, no, 353. And you just write K. You don't write the degree symbol after it. Um, and then this one we're going to also add 273, and that gives us 3. 23K. All right, and those are the numbers we're going to plug in. Okay, so our equation, V1 uh, T2 is equal to V2 T1. And then plug in some numbers. We've got 500 milliliters. I'm going to run out of space. T1 
times T2, which is 323K equals our um, V2, which we're just going to leave as V2, times, so I'm going to squeeze this in there, 353K. Ooh, this is ugly. That's 353K, guys. All right. There you go. And again, simple algebra, simply divide this side to get V2 by itself, because that's what we're looking for. Divide that side by 353K. Since you did it to that side, you got to do it to this side, 353K. And then um, over here, the 353K is cancel, leaving you with just V2. And then um, on this side also, the K's cancel, all right? But when you do all the numbers together, you end up getting 457 point. Five, one. And then our unit, all that's left over, because the K is canceled, is milliliters. And that makes sense, because it's volume. Okay? Um, and notice, um, V2, all right, 357.51. Check and make sure. Is it less than 500? It sure is. And that makes sense, because it cooled. Okay? Good luck on the homework, guys.